Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Chris Hicks joins us. He's the Washoe County District Attorney here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always pleased to welcome back to the program the Washoe County District Attorney, Chris Hicks. Pleasure to have you back, sir. Nice to be back. Okay, I want to start out with a, a topic that has been near and dear to my heart, as you well know, over these years, marijuana lounges. Yeah. We've got marijuana legalized and... Now, unless you live in the Washoe County area, you have no place to smoke it um, except your house. Um, if you're a tourist and you come in and you buy it at a dispensary, can't smoke it on the street, can't smoke it in a hotel. And I don't understand the opposition from uh, City of Sparks and from Washoe County. Um, do you have concerns about marijuana lounges? Well, um, the first thing I'd say is, you know, the legislature made it possible to have those lounges and then put it on the local governments to decide if they wanted to partake in that. Um, as you obviously know, our commission chose not to. It was a three to two vote. Um, and I think some of the concerns that they voiced um, are legitimate, and that is the public safety concerns of people driving. So shouldn't we shut down every bar? No, and, and <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm saying that that was their position. Um, and, and I don't think that that's an unrealistic one. Um, you know, so where that goes in Washoe County, I'm not sure. You know, that's up to our commissioners. They're the policymakers. Me personally, as you know, um, you know, I've always taken a position as the district attorney against the legalization of marijuana. It's legal now. Um, I had reasons that I thought were important of what our community would expect of the chief law enforcement official to say, and that was concerns about safety on our roadways and use among youth with the legalization of marijuana. And, and we have seen that, we have seen that grow. Um, but, you know, it is here and um, it's up to our policymakers to make that decision. I would have a concern, I mean, look, I'm not saying we should close all the bars, but let's be realistic. If there weren't bars, there would be less DUIs. Um, I, I, I think we Potent all could well, agree I know, with that. No, I know, I, I won't agree with that, because no? I'll say potentially, because you've got a black market. I sure. mean, it's like with the regulations and fees, et cetera, and taxes, um, we haven't gotten rid of the black market for marijuana. Not even the close. Black right, I the know, black I market agree. is thriving. <laughs> um, and also, 
Um, are you seeing a huge increase in offenses? Um, you know, I thought after the marijuana thing passed that I'd be driving down the freeway and seeing a lot of people going at 10 miles an hour. <laughs> and that really has not turned out to be the case. I, I haven't seen a lot of people driving 10 miles an hour on the freeway, but we, we have seen an uptick for sure. Of, Big, small, medium? Well, you know, um, there, there's not a, a good quantitative study yet out there to, to rely on. So I can only speak anecdotally. But we have had a more than usual DUI death cases come into our office. And from my right. perspective, one is too many. Right, of course. Um, and so we are seeing a lot of um, combination of alcohol and marijuana on board with people getting DUIs or getting in wrecks and, and hurting somebody. And, you, you know, it, it, using common sense, you can draw a correlation between the two. And, and again, I, I know lots of people that use marijuana. This isn't my personal stance, but as the chief law enforcement official of Washington County, these are things that I feel I need to worry about. Are we getting any closer to a, an, a test, an official test, that isn't just marijuana in the bloodstream that can be 30 days in there? Yeah, so our tests that are, that are being worked on out there um, across the country, and I think, we'll, I think we'll get there soon. Soon? Yeah. Within a year? Um, not sure on that. Um, I, I don't want to misstate it. I'm not positive when it would be coming. And do you see any opportunity for federal legalization of marijuana? Because the casino oh. industry, I think, would be more than happy to open the nicest lounges in the country. <laughs> I'm sure they would. You know, I, I have little faith in much getting done federally right now. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back more with the DA of Washoe County after this time out. Big R in Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School for workwear and everyday wear, evaporative coolers, outdoor living, Webers, Traegers, and Lodge. Fill your propane tanks here. Big R on Bering Boulevard in Sparks, next to Smith's, and across from Reed High School. Big R. Hardware, clothing, and a whole lot more. Remember 2010 in Northern Nevada, 13 to 14 percent unemployment, thousands of homes in foreclosure, Nevada's casinos closing? Families in the Reno Sparks area were hurting. Many were losing everything. Then Story County launched a game changer for our region, a public-private industrial partnership, streamlined permitting slash bureaucracy, attracting Fortune 500 companies that made Nevada their home. Story County generated a river of cash to area communities. Economic studies by the state and others for the Gigafactory consistently show positive economic benefits for our region. $4 billion in local wages, $17 billion in consumer spending and economic activity, over $100 million in taxes to Washoe, Story, Reno, Sparks, and Nevada, just for the Gigafactory alone. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time. $100,000 Cash is King Progressive Giveaways at Carson Valley Inn. Giveaways every Saturday with a Progressive up to twenty k and $15,000 in guaranteed grand prize giveaways. There's another 100,000 reasons to play and win at the Carson Valley Inn. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Chris Hicks. He's the Washoe County District Attorney. Uh, if anybody's been following Mark Robeson's uh, excellent coverage, of what's been going on in, in politics uh, in Washoe County, um, they are well aware of a man named Robert Beatles. Can you share with us who Robert Beatles is? Uh, yeah, Mr. Beatles uh, came into our community, I believe, in 2020. Um, got heavily involved in the Republican Party and um, has since, um, I guess, made it a mission to change some local government here in Reno, or um, Washoe County, really. He ran for office, I understand, in California, but did not succeed in that. Yeah, I don't have a good background on what he did prior to coming here. Okay, but he is apparently quite wealthy. That's what I've heard. And, and has contributed to several campaigns in the area, all of which is totally legal, by the way. And he operates um, a publication online called Operation Sunlight. Correct. Um, which I've gotten onto the mailing list of that, and it's interesting. He makes a lot of statements that are not necessarily backed up with facts but says that the facts are coming um, but he filed a lawsuit that uh, your deputy DA uh, in the headline in the uh, Reno Gazette Journal uh, Washoe DA's office calls Beatles lawsuit rantings of a conspiracy theorist warns of sanctions tell us what happened well Mr. Beatles uh, filed a lawsuit seeking to um, remove 
Um, several of our elected officials in Washoe County allege some other election violations. Um, and you know you know this, but some of your viewers may not. I mean, the other part of my role as district attorney is to represent Washoe County. We're um, their legal department. And as any attorney does, um, we represent them diligently and zealously, especially when um, we don't we think it is a, an, a lawsuit that is not righteous in any way. Mr. Beadle's um, his lawsuit naturally invoked our representation. Um, we removed that case, that, that first filing to federal court because there were constitutional claims there. And, um, and then um, f informed Mr. Beatles that we intended to seek sanctions because we believed it to be a frivolous lawsuit. Um, that's, that's part of the uh, motion you're speaking of. Okay, and, and what was frivolous about the lawsuit? Well, I don't want to go too deep into the weeds on And it, I understand Sam, that. But, but th the basic... Um, standard by Rule 11 is what it's called in the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, is a case that is um, statements that um, are not grounded in fact and not warranted by the law, claims that are not warranted by the law. And we believe both of those existed in that case. Um, we sent a letter to Mr. Beatles to let him know that we would be seeking sanctions. He withdrew that lawsuit. Um, he then filed a new one in state court and uh, has some similar allegations, but it has been modified, and we actually filed a motion to dismiss on that case, um, similar arguments um, yesterday. Okay, um, the, in, in your deputy DA's um, uh, response uh, to the original lawsuit, um, Mr. Beatles is apparently representing himself, but it seemed like there was a shot fired across the bowels from your office in terms of if somebody was ghostwriting this, that they could be held up for sanctions as well. Yeah, so there's a very good argument that can be made in the law that if, that if you're pro per status, but you're being supported by another lawyer, um, that you can actually seek sanctions against that lawyer. Um, so we wanted to make that clear. Okay, is there any evidence at this point that, that somebody else did help in writing this? Well, again, I'm limited into what I, I can say on the lawsuit. And, and as a practice, I try not to comment on pending litigation. I, I think it's best said in court. Um, what do you think about this whole idea of trying to get rid of a, a registrar of voters? We had her on the program uh, earlier this week. Um, I, I mean, the, the whole state of, of our elections, let me, let me re rephrase the question. So as you look back on the last several elections, do you find evidence of mass fraud, medium fraud, minimum fraud? You know, I have not seen anything that would suggest to me there was fraud. Um, and until I see something that would change my opinion, I believe our, we're, you know, no election system is perfect. I think the county is doing a good job of self-examination. Um, to make sure that they are always improving, um, but I have not seen anything that would suggest there was mass fraud. One of the things that Mr. Beatles is in favor of, and, and certainly others are, and by the way, I'm making a point, unless you pull charges on something, this is all perfectly legal, but the idea of, of replacing machines with paper ballots, does that make any sense to you? No, I think that there, that's ripe for error, um, and it's taking a step back. I think we have um, innovative ways to move forward. Um, I don't know what the future looks like for elections, but God, it, it sure seems to me that technology should be able to present some ways that um, you could do voter identification and voting um, digitally. I don't know if that's something that will be coming in the, in the next decade, but, um, but I don't know that moving backwards is the right, is the right way to go. You know, I don't know if you go shopping at Whole Foods, but you can go in there now and scam your palm, either your right, or both your right and your left palms, and that automatically links you to their system and your credit card, and it not only reads the exterior of your palm, but actually goes within your hand. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like we're getting better and better at security. I agree, I mean, I think that there's, you know, two-factor authentication, there's gotta be ways to do it, and I think it would actually, um, you'd meet the need of voter identification and you could also uh, make it easier on voters. Uh, but, but again, I don't know if the technology is out there. I, I would suspect somebody's working on that. But, um, but overall, we want an efficient and fair process. That's what everybody wants. And I think that that's what we're doing in Washoe County. What did you think of the settlement between Fox News and Dominion? Um, 
I, not much. I, you know, I, I didn't pay all that much attention to it. But were you surprised? I mean, three quarters of a billion dollars was not a small amount. No, um, no, not at all. Um, but I, you know, I, I didn't pay that much attention to it. To be all honest right, with all you. All right, let's take another break, and we'll come back. We okay. have other topics related to this after this timeout. Fantastic cocktails and delicious food. It's a good time to eat. Over 500 hot slots plus electronic table games. It's a good time to play. Player rewards and big time jackpots. It's a good time to win. Ooh, you get times to tame a wreck. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Chris Hicks. He's the Washoe County District Attorney. Um, have you had uh, discussions or your office has had discussions with members of either the County Commission, Reno Sparks, uh, um, councils about security or enhancing their security? Do you have concerns about their security? Um, I would say I, I have um, overall concerns for um, public officials' security. Um, you may know that last year myself and Sheriff Balaam were victims of some very egregious um, threats. Um, the, the individual was subsequently charged with intimidating a public officer, two counts, one for each of us. I mean, it was, there were, it was some alarming and um, scary, frankly, uh, threats. Uh, before he was arrested, nobody really knew where he was. And so um, he was convicted and sent to prison. But we're seeing kind of a, a, an uptick in those kind of threats. Um, so yes, um, I have an overall concern for, for public officials. You know, if you remember, going back probably a couple of years now, um, I talked to you about concerns for civil unrest. Um, do you have a higher concern today than you did then? I wouldn't say for civil unrest per se, but I, but I do worry about um, individuals that are, have radical views or who have fixated on public officials, um, maybe frankly by, because of information that out, that's out there that's not even accurate. Um, you know, in the case I mentioned, the, the individual who fixated on me and um, Sheriff Balaam, um, if, you'd have, if you walked down the path that got him there, it, would, it made little sense. And so um, I, I, I'm more worried about the individuals. Um, you know, if you go back to uh, um, the Oklahoma City bombings, um, there, there was discussion back then of cults. And I talked to Jim Richardson, who was at the time, he's Professor Emeritus now at UN Arbor, he was a professor, and studied cults in Nevada. And said, yes, we have cults that uh, are here. Um, most of them are over in eastern Nevada, and they're not particularly active. Um, do you have concerns that, that we have QAnon groups and cults here in Washoe County? You, you know, I have concerns over any type of organized criminal enterprise in Washoe County, whether it's gangs, um, whether it's a cult that might be, um, you know, becoming more radicalized and looking at some kind of unrest situation. I, I mean, I, I, I'm concerned with all of that, of course. I mean, my job is to protect the welfare of Washoe County. So I'm always concerned, have I heard of any, been briefed on any issues 
as you just h highlighted, no, I haven't. So at least that part is good news. Yeah. Uh, but but certainly you're being wary of what's going on. Always, yes. Um, and 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 I want to point out. And, and by the way, Mr. Beatles is more than welcome to contact me, and if he wants to appear on this program and discuss some of his issues, I'd be happy to have him on here, so I don't want people thinking that he wouldn't be welcome. Um, but so far, uh, beyond this particular lawsuit, the election fraud lawsuit, there's been nothing illegal that's occurred, correct? No. I mean, people showing up at county commission meetings, whether organized or disorganized, to complain about government, that's part of the process. Everybody's entitled to make public comment. Um, Chair Hill has, has made some modifications to try to make the meetings more efficient, but um, nothing illegal that I'm aware of has happened. Is, is there a point where um, if there is disruption at a county commission meeting that your office would need to step in? Well, I mean, if there's disruption, it's going to be the sheriff's office that's going to step in. Um, now, my office regularly works with all the elected county officials, all the department heads, um, where they're lawyers, as I said. Um, we may step in if it became into a prosecution, yes. Um, that, that certainly could happen. I mean, it's a business meeting. There has to be some decorum there. H how do we turn down the temperature? Because we're seeing more mm. and more polarization to the left and right. And although the independence uh, registration is going up and is in fact exceeding the Democrat and Republican registration, I think a lot of that is because people are registering at DMV and don't know that they're being put in as an independent. Um, but we have such a division. Do, do you see a way for us to find a middle again? Because there are a lot of people who are solid Republicans and solid Democrats, but they live in the middle, not in the extremes. How do we get back there? Can you know, we? It's a great question. I wish I had the answer, but I totally agree with you. I think the vast majority of us might have small difference of opinions, but we're, we're all pretty close together. Um, and I think leadership from the very top needs to come into place, whether it's federal or state. I think Governor Lombardo is doing an excellent job of being um, in the right place in, in kind of that type of um, polarization. Um, I think it needs to happen federally as well. Um, are you optimistic? <laughs> Not right now, no. Not right now. Because it, 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 I mean, you have been fortunate that you have run without opposition for re-election. Uh, a couple of times now. Um, so you're one of the few that gets uh, to do that and it shows the respect the community has for you. Um, but people of your caliber don't want to run because to run in a campaign, the attacks are unbelievable. And, and definitely, in most cases, not truthful. It's true. Um, it's a, uh, it, I don't know why people would want to expose themselves to that. Um, I've been very, very fortunate. I'm grateful to this community for what they've done for me. But um, at some of those higher levels, state level, uh, you know, elections and federal level elections, it's a it's a bloodbath. Um, do you want to see more um, uh, uh, things concerning uh, the next cycle of elections, more law enforcement um, that's obvious, um, or are you okay with the way it's been? Well, I think in, in Washington County we had very little issues with our poll workers. But there were people, according to the uh, registrar of voters. Uh, being called treasonous and traitors. Yeah. Um, and she said it wasn't a big <coughs> issue, but, but that was occurring. I mean, that's disgusting when you consider that most of the people who are manning these polls are retirees who are volunteering. Yeah, I think it's important that, you know, we don't focus on the, the few now, unless it gets very serious. I mean, the legislature did pass a law this year that says you, c you can't um, um, tamper with elected, with, you know, volunteers in the, in the elections. And so I think that's a good step. Um, but, I, but I was happy to hear there wasn't a lot of issues in Washoe County. Um, how do we turn this around to where people will have more faith in the viability of our election process? Because when, when you have it coming from a former president all the way down, it's kind of scary because that's, that's the voice they're hearing. You know, I think there, there's, there could be incremental steps. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of people that believe in voter ID um, on both sides of the aisle. And I, I think things like that, you know, if it's done appropriately, um, might instill more greater confidence. Um, so I think there's incremental things that can be done um, that will hopefully kind of land where everybody's content. 
You know, it's interesting <coughs> um, that that just becomes such a heavy issue, and it's crazy to me that for everything in life, you need an ID, except voting. And yet, a Secretary of State on this program has said it's a constitutional issue that everybody should be able to vote. And, and I agree that everybody should be able to vote who is qualified to vote, but I'm willing to pay extra tax money to make sure that those that don't have an ID can get an ID for free if necessary. But yeah, those arguments seem a little hollow to me. I think, like you said, everybody ha nowadays everybody has some form of personal identification. And to, to suggest otherwise is, I think, a little disingenuous. Well, but there may be uh, some that fall through those cracks. Okay, and, 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 I'll, make and sure I'll give that an example. You know, um, <coughs> there's a Wells Fargo near my office. I've been there on three different occasions where somebody's been trying to cash a check. They do not have ID. And my heart goes out to them if their check is legitimate that they are not able to cash it. But they can't do that. And that's why I say I would be happy if we had some form of taxation um, that allow people who don't have ID to be able to get ID. Uh, but that's not the case right now. Yeah. Hey, I always appreciate you coming in. It's good yeah. to see you. You too. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having and me. And we'll be right back. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcast. We'll see you on the next broadcast.